Hello everyone, uh, so I'm coming to you live again from the Faculty of Homeopathy Conference here in Liverpool and right now I am here with John Morgan who is founder owner of Helios, uh, one of the greatest pharmacies that we like to use, that I like to use. <laughs> no preferences, all the pharmacies are great. No, but um, I do use Helios products quite a bit in my practice. And I think it was quite an honor for me to meet John. Uh, and John here uh, was willing to talk to us about the development of new remedies over the last few years. Yeah. Well, welcome everybody. Nice to nice to see you. Um, this is kind of new, this uh, live Facebook <laughs> thing, but great, <laughs> great to use the technology. So hi. Uh, and thank you all for your support, uh, for those of you who have used EBS. Um, yeah, I got into homeopathy as a pharmacist because I just couldn't live with uh, the industry of pharmaceutical medicine. Uh, but I love the compounding side of it. And of course, homeopathy offered that, as well as the wonderful philosophy and the wonderful uh, arts and science that it is. So making remedies uh, has been a great joy over the years and uh, Helios' mission was to start from scratch and make them all again from original materials, which is quite a challenge, but after 32 years we're still carrying that flag and that'll, that'll carry on for however long we've gone for. Um, one of the main developments over the last uh, 30 years has been the development of new prudings and new remedies and uh, Helios has been really central to that thanks to the work particularly Jen Jeremy Shear in the beginning who got us going um, with the, the scorpion remedy which was one of the first prudings and then all those that have followed. When I, was, when I was at college, I remember in the first days there was a guy trying to encourage people to do provings and nobody knew what a proving was and was interested. So it was really in the UK anyway, Jeremy who started that impetus on and uh, it's just been a great, a great joy to, to work and have the challenge of having to formulate new remedies like gases like neon and argon for example to make hydrogen by adding zinc to acids and, and all that side of it, uh, which is uh, very satisfying as well as a pharmacist. Uh, we provide a service where we will prepare, still today, uh, remedies and potentise them free for approving if that proving is going to be published. So that's also one of the ways that we felt we could give back to the development of homeopathy and also help the profession and students and, uh, and groups, student groups, to experience proofings because it's a fantastic way of really getting to know firsthand the, the power of a remedy as well as having your own treatment of course. But when you do a proving with a group and you see how it unifies you all and how deep it goes, it's, it's a really wonderful experience. So I encourage everybody, if you have a chance, to do an organised proving. It's a great experience. So you mentioned that you wanted to make all the remedies fresh from scratch. Yeah. Um, were there remedies that were hard to source or we didn't understand there are, There are remedies that are hard to source. Um, the, the bacterial remedies, the nosos, are difficult to source. Um, because they need to do them new anyway, to do them fresh, because of the need for bacteriological equipment and, and, uh, and labs to do that. And um, there aren't many places that I know of that are doing doing them. Certainly not in Europe. I don't know whether the Indians do. But I was lucky enough when we started in '86 to, to get really good sources from Borough and Tapu in Philadelphia of low, lowish potencies with the main nosos, which I hope have the heritage back to Kent uh, and others um, but yeah there are some certain areas where we have to trust uh, and buy lower potencies from other pharmacies but I think the mass majority of what we've got have been made by us I mean we've had a wonderful conference and one of the key speakers for me was Didier Lustig who uh, has been one of the great pioneers of the antinide radioactive remedies and uh, he helped us a lot in getting sources for that yeah, that's he, been very difficult, but without that we wouldn't have those. So. He told me he hand succussed to the yeah. 6C all these radioactive remedies. To make them safe, yeah, absolutely. And we had to, we, we tested them with Geiger counters just to make sure they were safe. But they do have particulates in, they are below 12C, so, so that's, uh, that's wonderful. And yeah, we have relied on, on other people sometimes to get those raw materials. 
um, when people do new provings, we're very particular about you know, the species name, how they made it, the whole identity. And they often, people often ask me, particularly with animal rounds, well, what part should we use? Should we use the, flat, the, the fur, or should we use the tooth, or the blood, or, or, or the milk? And uh, in some ways, it doesn't really matter because when you do a new remedy with a new proving, the main thing is to have accurately, obviously the species, but how you made it. And that's how the remedy is made, and that's how it should be made in the future. And a lot of our work in homeopathic pharmacy is just imitating what the original provings did, which are some of them are well documented in the material medicals of the past. Not all, for example, Lacaninum, the species of dog, has famously never been uh, noted. So uh, I think uh, somebody did a survey of all the European pharmacies and found out we all use different species of dog. So how much that matters in the, in the what you see is what you get aspect of a remedy is, uh, is unknown. But um, it's very important to get that. It's very important to get that accuracy. We have someone in Ontario who's been proving different dog milks yeah. and getting different. I'm sure there'll be there'll be subtle differences, but um, and uh, I, and the other remedy is that. Some people have a problem with kind of philosophically, although they're, they're, they're old remedies, they're the imponderables. Those are the radiation remedies, and they, they go right back to um, Hahnemann with the magnetic pole, south and north, where you expose lactose or water or alcohol and to, to the ray to the rays. How are they made? Um, like I say, you, you just expose lactose or water or a mixture of water and alcohol to the ray for a certain period of time. So did Hanuman go to the North Pole? No, no, he had a magnet. He used a oh, magnet. the poles of the magnets, not... Uh, and we, uh, we redid, in, in the pharmacy in the 90s, my staff did reprovings of Sol and Luna. And those are made, those are made by John Henry Clark, the British homeopath. And that's, they're made by having a mirror and putting lactose on the mirror and then exposing that to the rays of the sun or the moon for six hours and stirring with a glass rod to, to keep uh, as much of the powder exposed as possible. And then that's triturated in the usual way. And um, they're not really big polycrest kind of remedies, they're really deep acting. They're very significant and important remedies, sold particularly. Very good remedy for burns, very good remedy for even anxiety states. It's got a real good sunstroke um, picture and it's a good picture. So. And then x ray, for example, you expose lactose to x ray for 10 minutes. Things like that. I love those, love those remedies. Yeah. And I'm kind of just we have a lot of general public who wants to know how how scientists and people with proper uh, medical and scientific training get interested in homeopathy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, as I said, I I love the pharmacy side, uh, but I didn't like the way drugs were suppressing people and. Um, so I was searching in the beginning for some sort of philosophy to make sense of my own subjective experience of how my mind and my emotions and, and the deeper levels interact with my body. And um, I was particularly interested when I was learning about the antidepressants and the tranquilizers and psychoactive drugs, how it was that you changed the biochemistry of the brain and, and there was a personality change, how that, how that kind of worked. Um, in terms of in terms of consciousness, and, uh, and that kind of interface made me start to think: uh, Well, is it is it are we totally governed by the biochemistry, by our physical systems, or is that a reflection of what we are on a deeper, more energetic level? So that was my first sort of question that I had. And then when I started reading the philosophy of homeopathy, which tells us that, that our symptoms and our life expression is particularly on the, on the physical, emotional, mental level is actually a reflection of our state within on a deeper level. And we know from homeopathy that disease starts on that level and then slowly descends into pathology. And, uh, and then the very positive message that life is always pushing us to fulfillment, it's pushing us to be free to be uh, free of symptoms, to be free of disease on all levels, but of course our inheritance and our lifestyles and a lot of other things get in the way. But nature is really uh, helping, helping us through health and, and disease sometimes to, to, to realise our full potential and live life to the full. Um, 
and so on a quality of life level homeopathy fits in so well um, because it's not suppressing people's expression and with guidance from a good homeopath all uh, that, that new uh, those new layers that are shared can really bring uh, a very good quality of life and a raising of consciousness in, in the experience. So. Did you feel a contradiction between homeopathic principles and pharmacies studied in school? Well, I remember telling the story that the first job I had was in Bristol, which is a, a very well-known homeopathic town in the UK. And I worked in this really old Victorian apothecary pharmacy. It was a bit like Hogwarts, you know, Harry Potter kind of word. It was a great training. And he gave me this prescription one day. I couldn't read it. I didn't know what it was. It was from Bryony 6. And and he showed me this and said, well, what is this? He said, it's a homeopathic prescription. And he was very open and supportive of it. And uh, I said, what's that? And he explained about the bryonia plant. And he, then he told me that this is gets diluted one in a hundred, one in a hundred, you know, so many times. And I remember saying, and that works. You know, because the pharmacy is all about measuring the active ingredient and formulating it in a, in a formulation and it having an effect that you can measure physiologically etc. So yeah it did challenge that but because I was already starting to question this interface I think, before between soul and spirit and the human condition and looking at spiritual uh, ideas that um, I, I remained open so I wasn't closed to it and then when it, when it came round again I came well, going to India it was a big uh, a big uh, thing for me because in India there's so much complementary medicine, particularly homeopathy. So I was reading avidly for many, many years, all sorts of things, and finally homeopathy came. And the other thing I, I, that, that was, in, was a good, good for me was that when I was a pharmacist, we were still working with plant tinctures and plant materials. For example, belladonna tincture and nuts vomit tincture were still being used in, in medicines. And I remember that uh, we were given prescriptions for digitalis leaf tablets and colchicum tablets. Digitalis for heart problems and colchicum for gout. And, and then belladonna, nuts vomit and other, and squilla, those sort of alcoholic tinctures, that similar to the mother tinctures in homeopathy, were being used in pharmacy. So I studied what's called pharmacognosy, which is the study of plant drugs, and I loved that. Um, I did botany and A-level, and, uh, and I studied a bit of herbalism and nature as well. So I was already interested uh, in plants and botany, and it fitted really well. And uh, yeah, I, I, I always had a practice as well. I trained as a homeopath and always had a part-time practice. So, so I've had coming to the end of my career, but I've had a wonderful career thanks to homeopathy, as, both as a homeopath and as a pharmacist. So, yeah, it's been wonderful. Thank you so much for giving us some time. I know it's the last day and it's a little crazy today, but yeah. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks everyone. Hopefully Thank there'll be another one coming soon. Well, and uh, we'll talk to you soon.